Hi guys, Chris here at EFA. So I'm at Razor's booth now. They have recently launched the new Blade Stealth that I'm going to take a look at. So this is and now pretty much a gaming ultrabook because it's got the GTX 1650 in it. So it's going to give people a bit of gaming performance now, not relying on just Intel's dedicated, should I say, the integrated graphics. It's now got the dedicated graphics. So this has the new Ice Lake CPUs in it. So up to the Core i7, the 1065G7, that's 25 watts. Now the touchpad, nice and large, good smooth surface on it. We have an alloy top finish on the bottom that is matte. The keyboard, very thin laptop, top firing speakers as you can see. Now I've done a quick little type and play around with this one. They've currently got a game running. So you can feel the performance of the cooling that yes, it does actually get warm to the touch that so is touching around right now. I'm noticing there is quite a bit of heat build up. Now I would estimate that this is probably around 45 uh, degrees C that you'd be getting around here. Now it's got Thunderbolt 3 support here, but you can see that there's labeled on the left. And I do like the design of the hinge feels good. Fraser logo on the top there as well. Really good build to it. And let's take a look now at the touch one that's got the 4K touch screen. So this has a very radiant display, very good brightness so far that I'm seeing here. Uh, the lighting in EFA right now with our setup, Razer, isn't exactly particularly good. It's not super bright, very difficult conditions for tech YouTubers to actually get some good footage. But it looks great, this display. Now it supports 10 touch, 10 touch points on here and response seems really quite good. Now I've just noticed too that they are using the GTX, it's a 1650, but it is Max 2 design, okay? So it's not gonna be quite as powerful, lower clocks, than the normal GTX 1650. Now this is to be expected because of the thinner design, of course. Now they're using Intel's Wi-Fi 6 here, so it's the AX201. And there is the CPU, you can see. So it's listed eight times because it has eight threads. It's a quad core from Intel, and it does also support, you can see too, that it's the Iris Plus graphics that it's using. And this is the cheaper version here. So this one's got the full HD display, it's matte and it does look very good with the bezels again but in the silver so this one doesn't have the dedicated gpu it's just got the iris plus but it's the iris plus with a 25 watt tdp so they've got an extra 10 watts because normally this would be 15 watt configuration the extra 10 watts is going to give that gpu a little bit more performance than say other brands using this particular configuration with this cpu i do like the look of it and the silver as well i don't think it doesn't quite have the gamer kind of look. The black I think looks just a little bit sleeker though to me personally. So on the right of the laptop here you can see that we have a Type A USB 3.1 and we have Thunderbolt 3 and on the left we've got a Type C port here. I think there's another Type C. I don't believe it is a Kensington lock slot or it could be but they've got it locked in here for at least this unit that's on demo and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. So while the Razer Rex weren't looking, I've just quickly installed Geekbench 5 here and I'm going to just check out the performance. So it's just finished actually, it's in the background right here to see what the i7, the 1065 G7 can get. So single core score here is 1275 and almost 3000 here on the multi-core scores performance with those 8 threads. And this is the result of the OpenCL score, so it's 8676. Taking a look at the cooling we have on the rear, so we've got two intake vents right here, exit vents, so plenty of cooling. Rear rubber foot seems to be a bit higher than the one at the front of course, just to allow better airflow. So hopefully this is going to do its job. I'm speaking to the PR contact here to see if I can get a loan unit to review, possibly in the channel one of these laptops, because they do interest me, I happen to really like this kind of tech. So no word on pricing yet, I believe that the non-GTX version which is the one that doesn't have the dedicated GPU, should be out in September, and then it's going to be later in October, or late October, for the more interesting and more expensive version with that NVIDIA GTX 1650 Max-Q. So thank you so much for watching this very quick, hands-on, brief look at the new Razer Blade Stealth 13.